All right, so in this lesson, we're going to continue our discussion on greatest common factors, but our greatest common factor is going to be a binomial this time. And what that means, instead of uh, having one number we can pull out or a variable we can pull out, we're going to notice in this problem that between the plus signs, each one of these has an x minus 5. What that means is we're going to pull out an x minus 5 and write <coughs> the leftovers in our parentheses. Now, our leftovers this time is going to be, if I pull out an x minus 5, it's going to be left with an x plus 6. And then I bring down my plus sign. And then this one, I cross out my x minus 5 because I divided it out technically. And I'm left with a 2x plus 5 on the inside. Okay? So what you can see is I'm left with an x plus 6 on the first one and a 2x plus 5 on the second one. And then inside the big parentheses, the refrigerator, you actually want to simplify further to see that I have 2x and x, which gives me 3x, and I have plus 6 and 5, which makes 11. And so my answer should be x minus 5 times 3x plus 11. So you want to go ahead and do the last little step of simplifying at the end of the problem, and that will give you your final answer. So let's do it again. This time, uh, we've got m plus n squared in common. So there's actually a whole exponent also. So what you can see is I'm going to pull those out. Um, m plus n squared. And write your parentheses for the leftovers. And if I pull out an m plus n squared, it's gone. I'm left with a z squared. So I put z squared. Plus, the plus sign comes down. Uh, this other m plus n crosses out, and I'm left with x squared. There's no simplifying to be done after that, so this is actually your final answer on this problem. So again, it's just GCF, but it's uh, it's not just one number, It's there's an addition or something like that going on, a binomial. So here's another example, but this time, they both have an r plus 2s, but the difference is, is this one's got a 2 and this one's got a 3. That means that they, the first one has less of it, and so, again, the biggest amount that I can pull out is the smaller of the two exponents, the 2. So that means I'm going to pull out r plus 2s squared. And then I'm going to be left with, so the first time, the first one, it cancels out everything except for the p. And then I bring my minus sign down, minus, there's a q, so I bring down the q. And I have to be careful here because I can't cancel all this out. I only can cancel out two of them, which means one of these is left. So I have a q times r plus 2s left over on the inside of my parentheses coming down. So I pulled out one of the r plus 2s, or two of them, and I'm left with one on the inside. Okay, this will probably be acceptable as my answer. Um, I could also distribute this q but I, I believe that, that would the answer that we have here is sufficient. But I'll just go ahead and distribute the q. So we have r plus 2s squared times p minus qr minus q. Well, it would be minus 2qs. Okay? So either one of these would work fine as my answer. So that's, again, an example where I, I don't pull out all of it. I pull out... Uh, one or two groups of my binomial that's being raised to a power. Okay, now I'm going to see an example of factoring out a negative. I showed one in the first example, but here's a problem where it actually makes sense because they all have a's in common, and two of them are negative. So often, especially when the front one is a negative, is an example of where I really want to pull out a negative a rather than just pulling out an a. So I want to pull out a negative a, and then I'm left over with, I divided this one by a negative a, so that's going to turn into positive a squared. Because I have one a canceling out with one of those, so I'm left with two, and the, the negative sign turned into a plus sign. So now this one is a positive 3a, so a squared, sorry. When I divide that by a negative a, the a turns into a 1 exponent, and the plus sign actually turns into a negative, because a positive divided by a negative is negative 3a. And finally, I pull out a negative, or divide by a negative a on this last one. The a's cancel, the sign turns positive, because negative divided by negative is positive, and I'm left with 5. 
So this would be my final answer if I divided or factored out a negative a. So now we're going to move into what's called factoring by grouping. This is our last type of factoring. But it's also like the examples I was doing just a second ago where I was factoring out a, uh, a, a binomial. And you're going to see that when we cut this problem in half. And before I cut it in half, I want to actually usually make sure that I have like terms. This one actually there's two ways I can cut it in half. Actually I can just cut it in half just like I have here. So I draw a line right down the middle and what I want to do is first I look at the so I have one, two sides. I first want to look at the side number one and see what do these have in common. Well they both have threes in common. So I actually want to do a little GCF first. So I pull out a GCF of three and then write my leftover on the first side which is X minus Y. Okay. Now I look at this second problem, and I look for what they have in common, and notice again there's a negative as my first one, so actually they both have an A. So I'm going to pull out a negative A, though. Not 9, sorry. Negative A. Because the first one was a negative sign, usually you want to pull out a negative. And what's left over here is X plus Y. So now what I did after factoring my first and second side is now I have this problem where they both have, I'm sorry, my sign should have been x minus y. They both have an x minus y left over. So now this looks like one of the first problems I was doing where these both have a binomial in common. So you factor twice. First time I look for a GCF of a monomial. What monomial means one term. So I pulled out the 3 and the A. Those are monomials. And the second time, you look for a GCF of your binomial. Okay, and binomial means 2. Okay, so I pull out an X minus Y on both. If I do that, I'm left over with a 3 from the first one and a negative A from the second one. So a 3 and a negative A. Okay? And then this is my final answer. X minus Y times 3 minus A is the actual answer from the original problem. So this is the total factored answer. So I first I separate it, cut it down the middle, do GCF for the monomial, and then I once I do that after both times, I look for a, a binomial factor. Now one other note thing to note on this problem is that if I hadn't pulled out a negative a, this is, so if this was a positive a here, this would have been a negative x and a positive y, and I would have been able to notice that these are not the same binomial, so I wouldn't have been able to factor. Okay, So you got to make sure that these are actually the same binomial in order for you to do the second step. So let's do another example here. So again, the first step is to cut it down the middle. And what you'll see is that the first two on the left-hand side both have an A, so I'm going to have my leftover be X minus Y. The second two both have a B in common, so I'm going to pull out a B, and leftover is X minus Y. And that's good because now both of them have X minus Y in common. So the first step on the left and right was to pull out a monomial, which is my one term, and now I'm looking at them both and I want to pull out a binomial. And now that means I pull out my x minus y, and if I pull out my x minus y, the leftover terms are my a and my plus b. And this is my final answer user using grouping. So let's see one more example, and this one looks a little more complicated, but it's not much worse. So I draw my line down the middle, and again, middle is you count one, two, cut in half. And it, you do factor my group, by the way, when there's four terms. Okay, so you can see there's one, two, three, four terms here. Okay, so again, I cut it down the middle, and I have 6ax and 12bx. Well, they both have an x in common and they also have a 6 in common. So I pull out my 6, x, and leftover would be a plus 2b. 
And now notice how the second term is already an a plus 2b. And that's what I want this thing to be. Well, I can't just pull out a plus 2b without having it be in parentheses like this. And what that means is I needed to have a factor in front. Well, they didn't have anything in common. Well, there's always something that they have in common if they technically don't have anything in common, and that number is a 1, a positive 1 here in this case. Okay, so you, you do want to put the plus 1 there because it makes a difference on the next step, which is that I'm going to pull out my a plus 2b, and then left over, it's very important that I write 6x and then plus the 1. Okay, because if I don't have the plus 1 and I just push 6x, it, it wouldn't be the same answer. And if I distributed back or foiled here, uh, you wouldn't get the right answer if you don't have the plus 1. So it's very important that you do actually factor out a 1 if it doesn't have a factor, a GCF. So no GCF, you put a 1.